And it's to the Pearl of East Africa that we take you to discover an artistic explosion. Follow us to Kigali, where contemporary painting driven by passionate artists like Pacific Nyonsenga transcends borders. Between vibrant galleries and daring initiatives, immerse yourself in this creative universe where every brushstroke is a story, every canvas a testimony. Welcome to the heart of Rwanda's artistic effervescence, where the promise of a vibrant future can be seen on every canvas. Our journalist Alexandra Vépierre went there to find out war. Take a look. Ivoca Arts, the country's first modern art gallery, opened in Kigali's Kasiru district in 2007, is now closed. 16 years later, the city now boasts around 20 such galleries. A self-taught musician, dancer and painter, Pacific Nyonsenga, opened his own gallery in 2015, the Neo Arts Gallery. This former street child adopted by a Canadian missionary couple donates 40% of the gallery's profits to his association, the Neo Foundation, which helps children. Today, Neo Arts Gallery hosts 17 artists in residence mainly from Rwanda, but also from East Africa. In eight years, Pacific Nyosenga has seen the arts industry develop in his country. I'll say our industry is growing. In 2015, you know, you have nothing. You haven't sold so many pieces on your own to get enough capital. You, the materials was not easy to find and, you know, all those things. But today we have everything and we are doing great. We are very thankful now that uh, Rwandans have given the art the value that it needs and the international recognition of Rwanda for the best performances. Tourism is coming a lot, so we get appreciation of, uh, of our art through the tourists coming through. That motivates us to create a lot. Thanks to Rwanda's tourism policy and social networks, more and more tourists are discovering and buying Rwandan paintings. Some artists have also been invited to exhibit in international galleries. 65-70% of our clients are from America. And then we have few Europeans, we have few Africans, very few Rwandans. I mean, you also have to understand that art, it's not a basic need. And usually Rwandans are trying to, to first take care of the basic needs and then come to regular items later. Although some artists break through abroad, few manage to make a living from their art. There's a lot of misunderstanding about artists and they don't receive any state support. The majority of artists learn on their own, relying solely on the sector's strong sense of mutual support to improve their techniques and understand the environment. There's currently one art college located in Rubavu in the west of the country. The Nyondo Art School offers sections in graphic art and sculpture and ceramics. But once they have finished their studies, many students leave for other countries because of lack of opportunities. It was with this in mind that Keeneth and Kuzi set up his own gallery. Trained as an architect turned painter, he grew up with five brothers, all of whom became artists. In his brother's gallery, Kenneth regularly receives calls from young artists wanting to be exhibited. Last March, he opened his maths gallery to help these young people. It's always been a, a question of uh, exchange. So most of uh, my uh, uh, sessions with them, it's through chatting, like through engaging, through conversations, like what can I do more? It starts from creating to exhibiting to uh, using platforms like uh, social media to also networking, like not just being stuck here, but also reach out to other galleries and see how they operate. This solidarity also exists among women artists. Virtually absent from galleries, Rwandan women artists exist but suffer from gender stereotypes. In response, the artist and curator Jamima Kakizi is highlighting the work of women through exhibitions that she is setting up throughout the country. In 2020, she co-founded the Rwandan Women Artist Collective, which brings together dozens of women. It's an online platform uh, for women in the visual arts, different mediums, that we use to, to give visibility to women, of course, make sure that they are visible, they are there, 
Because in the past years, you will come to Rwanda and people will tell you, I don't know any woman artist. But now it, it will be very hard. After the collective, I realized that, okay, the visibility maybe is no longer an issue, but we are not being you know, featured in exhibitions. So it inspired me to start do, um, um, an online gallery that is called, an online platform called Imhundu Arts where we curate exhibitions uh, for women artists across Rwanda. To ensure that women's work also exists in the country, Jemima plans to set up her own gallery in 2024. The future of the art industry in Rwanda looks full of promise.